Hi, thank you for joining us for Should You Drink to That, a presentation on the impact of alcohol and underage drinking. This presentation is a part of a virtual training series collaboration between the Brockton Area Prevention Collaborative and the Plymouth Youth Development Collaborative. I'm Amanda Sandoval, and joining me today is Hilary Dubois. A lot of people undermine the topic of underage drinking because it's just been so normalized and it's so common in our society. This presentation touches upon information about the most commonly used substance and more than likely the first substance that anyone ever experiments with. What you need to know when you thought that you knew everything. Today's presentation will include information on why is it important to talk about alcohol, the effects of alcohol on not only your brain and your body, but your social life as well, why people drink in the first place, knowing what your poor is and understanding binge drinking, alternatives to drinking and safe practices if you do, and lastly, we'll discuss how to help a friend and local resources. So why is it important to talk about alcohol? Starting at a young age, people are familiarized with alcohol. In the US, the legal drinking age is 21. However, an overwhelming amount of American teens and young adults report that they drink before their 21st birthday. In our region, 13% or 452 middle and high school students reported that they drank alcohol within the past 30 days during the 2018 to 2019 school year. Alcohol is an important part in our society. It's a normal part to most of our social events. Most people enjoy drinking on a regular basis, and these are widely held beliefs about alcohol because mostly in part created by alcohol advertising and pop culture. So then what's the big deal? If it's so normal, what's the problem? Alcohol is the most commonly used addictive substance in the United States. More than 17 million people, or one in every 12 adults, suffer from alcohol use or dependence. More than half of all adults have a family history of alcoholism or problem drinking, and more than 7 million children live in a home where at least one parent is dependent on or has abused alcohol. Have you noticed how alcohol advertisements are everywhere? Americans are bombarded with $4 billion of alcohol marketing each year. One study found that for each dollar the alcohol industry spends on youth advertising, young people drink 3% more each month. Whether it's music from the 70s or Takashi 69, drug and alcohol use have always been present in our pop culture. Movies, music, substance use is glorified and oftentimes without ever even discussing any of the consequences. Why do you think that might be? A lot of artists glorify drug and alcohol use in their music, which then promotes this behavior to their listeners. This is often true for any genre, country, hip hop. People don't always identify connections between the media that they consume and their personal beliefs, values, and behaviors. Sometimes they feel the media doesn't influence them at all and can just appreciate the artistry of a song or a show and disconnect it completely from their own life. What impact do you think artists could have if they promoted health and wellness through their platform? With advertisements, music, and the society we've grown up in, it makes it really difficult to not feel curious. No one ever said, I want to grow up and be addicted to drugs or alcohol. It's just never anyone's intention. But there are just so many different factors that impact your risk. It's important to understand that drinking before the age of 15 makes an adolescent four times more likely to develop a problem with alcohol in the future. Hi, my name's Hillary, and I will be joining Amanda for this presentation. If you're considering using alcohol for the first time, try to ask yourself why. What's the reason you're feeling so tempted? When we think about first-time substance use, oftentimes it can be broken into three main categories, to feel good, to feel better, or to do better. People often drink because it feels good. There's a feeling of curiosity to get drunk, like what will that feel like? People drink to celebrate. There's a culture around substance use to celebrate a victory. People drink to have fun. There's an idea and a perception that if you drink while you're doing an activity, it will make it more fun. A lot of people think that drinking with friends and family helped create a stronger bond and that's why it's done in a lot of social settings. 
Drinking can be glamorized by peers, modeled by the media and celebrities, and even sometimes by people's guardians. People drink to feel better. This is the idea of self-medication. People drink to ease the feelings of anxiety or depression. However, in excessive drinking, those feelings are almost always made worse. People drink because they want to get rid of feelings of trauma or stress or when people are having problems with friends or family. Sometimes people drink to deal with a feeling of loneliness or even sometimes just because they feel bored. Lastly, people drink to do better. There's an idea that alcohol can be liquid courage or social lubricant to help get the courage to go and talk to someone or to do something. We've discussed some of the reasons why people use alcohol, but we didn't mention that people may be using them because they've formed an addiction or they've lost control. Ever hear someone say it's five o'clock somewhere? Even though people say this, many times people aren't waiting for a certain time in the day or the week to consume alcohol. Drinking occurs at all different times, whether it's a drink at dinner with friends, a cocktail out with coworkers, a beer to remember a lost loved one, or a shot to celebrate a promotion. Drinking occurs all day, every day, throughout the United States and across the world. Alcohol can be used when people are feeling all different types of emotions, including joy and anger, sadness, rage, and stress. Alcohol is used to celebrate events, a toast at a wedding, or to celebrate an anniversary, or even with specialty drinks around the holidays. A lot of alcohol comes in a vast variety of different types and flavors, so it gives people more of a reason to try to experiment with alcohol. It's five o'clock somewhere is a concept that comes from the notion that after a long or stressful day at work, people can drink alcohol to relax or unwind as it can help alleviate stress for some people. Though these are all identified reasons that people do consume alcohol, it's not necessarily the best way to handle these situations. Alcohol consumption, especially excessive consumption, can have numerous negative effects on the body, mind, and even socially. Think about what's your why. Just because people might do it for these reasons doesn't mean it benefits them. When young people experiment with alcohol, they often don't know what or how much they're drinking. Knowing what you're consuming can help to limit your risk. The amount of alcohol in your glass, can, or beer does not necessarily match up to how much alcohol is actually in your drink. When a person says that they're having a glass of wine with dinner, that might sound okay, but how big was the glass that they drank from and what was that person's pour like? Cans of wine are on the market now and they're the equivalent of a half of a full-size bottle of wine and beers are sold in 750 milliliter bottles, which is the standard size of a bottle of wine. That means that in those seemingly single service serving options um, that you're actually having way more servings of alcohol in it. Another way to visual, visualize this is if an individual is consuming one glass of beer, but that glass is 24 ounces, they're technically consuming two glasses of beer. It's also important to recognize that the amount of alcohol that one person consumes varies entirely from person to person. What one person can drink and feel fine and control with might be completely different for what another person can tolerate. Also, if a person is physically dependent or has an addiction to alcohol, they may present very differently from someone who doesn't have that same level of tolerance. Drinking large amounts of alcohol in a small period of time is called binge drinking, and that can look very different for a young person versus an older person. For young men, three to five drinks in a two hour or less time period is considered binge drinking, while in that same time period, a young woman um, at three drinks is considered binge drinking. It's important to consider a whole host of factors when you're thinking about how drinking affects you. Things like how quickly you're drinking, what your body weight is, if you've eaten anything, your gender, and even interestingly enough, the mixer. Did you know that juice and water actually slow down alcohol absorption while the carbonated beverages actually increase how quickly your body absorbs the alcohol? Put another way, you're actually absorbing alcohol faster if you have a vodka and soda versus if you had a vodka with orange juice. Other factors are things like fatigue, stress, or mood. So we've discussed how people consume it, but let's talk about how alcohol actually impacts our brain. Although you might feel an initial buzz from alcohol, this depressant ultimately slows down your brain's function. 
your brain continues to develop well into your 20s. And alcohol can interrupt the way that your brain grows and how it actually works. It's important for young people to understand that while drinking can be dangerous for both youth and adults, youth are just at a further risk due to the developing nature of their adolescent brain. The prefrontal cortex in an adolescent's brain is underdeveloped, which this part of the brain is responsible for considering consequences, for decision-making, and can lead youth to make impulsive decisions. The reward system of our brain as an adolescent is overdeveloped. And this is the part of the brain that seeks to be social, it seeks to find pleasure, and so this setup sort of sets youth up for failure because when it comes to seeing their consequences or even when considering to use substances. The earlier a person uses substances, the more at risk they are to later develop a substance use disorder. One in four Americans who began using any addictive substance before the age of 18 are addicted which is in comparison to one in 25 Americans who stated using at age 21 or older. Delaying use of alcohol until the age of 21 will decrease the likelihood of you developing an addiction. Alcohol has a significant impact on not only your brain, but also your body. Over time, excessive alcohol use, both in the form of heavy drinking or binge drinking, can lead to numerous health problems and chronic diseases. It's really common for people to use other substances while they're drinking. The effects of drinking and taking other substances, which that includes over-the-counter or prescribed medications, can be unpredictable and dangerous. So when combining alcohol with marijuana, it can cause nausea, vomiting, panic, anxiety, paranoia, Mixing alcohol with an upper, such as alcohol, cocaine, or even high amounts of caffeine can put the body under great stress. And when you do this, you're sending your body this mixed signal. The alcohol slows down your breathing while the stimulant speeds up your heart rate. And then drinking alcohol while taking another downer, such as Xanax or codeine, again, this puts your body at a great risk because it's multiplying the effects of these substances. It's not just adding one on top of the other. And the results can really be unpredictable and dangerous. So we've talked about how alcohol impacts your body, how it impacts our brain, but a lot of times people really hear the message when they understand how it can impact them socially. So in its extremes, social problems can include unemployment, lost productivity, family problems, violence, addiction. More immediately, it can factor into unintentional injuries, posting regrettable things on social media, breaking valuables, not remembering what you said or did, and alcohol poisoning. Drinking is just so glamorized by pop culture and music, like we talked about before. But there are so many people that go home and severe drinking is their reality within their family. So when does drinking stop being cool? Sometimes young people do end up making the decision to try alcohol and end up in the presence of it. While it's not something we're promoting, it's important that people are proactive and know how to protect themselves and others. Know what you're drinking. Don't leave your drink unattended and make sure you make your own drink. It's also important not to drink on an empty stomach. Don't drink if you're taking medication and pace yourself. Call the designated driver, an older sibling, a sober friend, or even your parent. Anybody would rather that you call them than make the choice of trying to drive home. Um, you can also always spend the night or try taking an Uber. Definitely don't risk dri driving home. Knowing what you are consuming is important, um, but it's also important to keep an eye out for your friends. Knowing what to do if your friend consumes too much alcohol or mixes alcohol with other drugs can be a lifesaver. Don't leave your friend alone and make sure you check on them regularly and make sure that they're in a safe space. Um, it's important to know that someone's condition can change quickly, so you definitely need to make sure that you're looking out for them regularly. Turn them on their side if they're sleeping or passed out. 
and check for signs of alcohol poisoning, which include being passed out and not really responding or not being able to wake up, having cool or clammy or even bluish or gray skin, or having slow, irregular breaths or vomiting and not being able to um, be awoken in that situation. Most times people realize that they have an issue with alcohol at the point in which the consequences outweigh any of the benefits that they're getting from it. There are four questions that are really important to ask yourself if you think that maybe you are having a problem with alcohol. There, if you've ever felt like you needed to cut down on drinking, have you ever felt guilty about your drinking? Have people ever been annoyed or criticized, criticizing your drinking? Have you ever had a drink first thing in the morning to act as like a pick me up? If you've answered yes to two or more of these questions, it could be an indication that you have a pro potential problem with alcohol. Just like when you make any decision, it's important to know what the consequences are that could come from those decisions. We'd like to take the next few minutes to discuss two laws that impact you if you decide to drink. Most people who drink under the age of 21 report receiving the alcohol that they consume from friends or family members. In Massachusetts, the social host law makes it illegal for an adult to provide or furnish alcohol to a minor and can have consequences of up to $2,000 in fines and or jail time. That means if your parents let you have your friends over and have a party and alcohol is provided to them, they can experience serious consequences. But also don't forget, if you have a party and you supply alcohol to your friends, you can also be charged as a social host under these laws. If you find yourself in a situation where you're questioning whether your friend is in trouble or not, it's really important that you go with your gut. You're protected under, under the Good Samaritan Law in Massachusetts. If you're under the age of 21 and you seek help for yourself or a friend who is incapacitated by alcohol, you will not be charged under the social host law, procurement, or minor in possession laws. When drinking, it takes a good friend with courage to get the help that they need for their friend knowing that they could face some potential consequences. Don't be mad at your friend if they get you help. So we've spent a lot of time talking about the impacts that alcohol can have on a person's brain, body, and their social life. But what's important to address next is those who decide not to drink. Sometimes when young people choose not to drink, they feel like they're the only one. When in reality, youth who choose not to drink aren't alone. In the Plymouth area, middle and high school students worked with their local coalition to combat the perception that everyone's drinking alcohol. If you find yourself in a situation where alcohol is present, there are several things to think through in order to make the right choice in the moment. Here are some real reasons that young people reported that their reason why they chose not to drink and some tips that you might be able to use to refuse under each drinking. I just don't want to. Peer pressure with alcohol can start at an early age and continue well into adulthood. Not wanting to drink is a good enough reason. I'm driving. Whether youth, young adults, or all grown up, I'm driving should be a good enough reason to not drink. My parents are so strict about my curfew. Household rules come in all shapes and sizes, but many young people report having curfews keep them on track, especially with a mandatory check-in at night. I've got too much to lose this season. They say there's no I in team. Athletics are both a privilege and a responsibility. No one wants to be the person to let their entire team, coach, or their sport down, and violating the chemical health policy for the MIAA would do just that. I'm sick and I don't know what would happen if I mix my cold medicine with alcohol. Mixing medications, as we just discussed, prescription or over the counter with alcohol can be dangerous. My parents wait up for me and I have to say goodnight. So let's take alcohol out. What do you fill up your cup with? What helps you to be social? What helps you relieve your stress? What brings you joy? What makes you feel good about yourself? Is it your relationships? Is it your resilience? Is it yoga, sports, self-confidence, self-control? Take a second to reflect on what fills up your cup and look at some of the examples that other local youth have shared with us. There are a lot of fun things that you can do without using alcohol. Here are some things to try that can encourage you to be social, have fun, and fill your cup with. 
grow. Learn and play a new game, read a book, develop a new skill, journal, or create art and music. Engage, join a club or a group, write a letter to somebody, make a new recipe, hang out with someone new, listen to a podcast, move, try to organize a sports tournament, go for a walk or a jog, try a new type of exercise. Learn a new dance, hike, or bike a trail, and connect. Volunteer locally, research a family tree, learn a new language, practice yoga or mindfulness, and spend time with your loved one. We want to end this presentation on how you can help a friend who might be having some trouble with substances. There are many warning signs that your friend might have if they're struggling with drugs or alcohol. These warning signs could include a significant change in personal hygiene, change in academics, um, a need to use to escape or cope, having a new group of friends, or if they've tried to stop but they find that they can't. It's okay and encouraged that you tell an adult if you have a friend that you really sense there is a major issue with. If you're going to talk to your friend or loved one about your concerns, the response you get might be rooted in defensiveness. Try your best not to accuse or argue in response. It can be difficult, but it's important to try to come from a place of understanding and be patient. Ensure them that you're coming from a place of love and that you're worried about them. Most importantly, ensure them that they're not alone and don't give up on them. Here are some local resource lines that can be really helpful for someone who's looking for support. The text crisis line is really helpful, user-friendly way to contact someone if you're looking for support or help over text. The Massachusetts Substance Use Hotline is a wonderful resource. Um, then there's the mobile crisis intervention number that you can also call. Locally, we have Independence Academy, High Point Treatment Center, and Learn to Cope, which are all great local resources for anyone who's looking for help. Lastly, my name is Hilary Dubois, and thank you for joining myself and Amanda today. We hope you learned a little something about the most common substance used on the planet. Thank you.